Hi. Now, in this video, what I want to do is introduce you to recurrence relationships, or as some people call them, term-by-term -term relationships. Now, I'm assuming that you're familiar with what we mean by a sequence. Remember, it's a pattern that follows between each of the terms. And in a previous video, we talked about sequences and the terminology that we use to define the terms. We've got here u1, well that represents the first term, which in this sequence would be 6. The second term u2 is 13, and then we've got the third and fourth terms being 27 and 55 respectively. Now there's a relationship between each of the terms. If you look carefully, you'll see that if you double any term, let's say, let's say we take the 6, double it, we would get 12, and then if we were to add 1, we get 13. And it works still. If we double 13, we get 26, add 1, 27. And you'll see doubling 27 and adding 1 gives 55. So we've got this pattern that goes between each of the terms. And one way then of grouping these terms together and other terms in the sequence is to use a recurrence relationship formula. And by that, I mean that if I double any term, let's say that we call any term un, and then I add one to this, I get the next term up in the sequence, and that term would be u n plus 1. And this is known as a recurrence formula, or recurrence relationship, or term by term relationship. Now, we need to define the starting term, which would be u1. So we'll just say where u1, the first term, equals 6. And n is an integer which is greater than or equal to 1. So expect to see something like this. Now there's a drawback with formulas like this though. If I wanted to find say the hundredth term then I've got to work through each term term by term if you like through this particular formula. So it is a bit of a disadvantage. It's much better if you just happen to have a formula which gives us the nth term. However, this is, as I say, one way of defining a sequence. Now I'm going to work through several examples and I would certainly encourage you to have a go at these. They tend to reflect different ideas. So in the first example, it's basically just using this idea then. Find the first three terms in the sequence and we've got the n plus 1th term, un plus 1, is equal to 3 times un, the nth term squared, minus 9. And our starting term, first term, u1, is 2, where n is greater than or equal to 1. So you might like to even pause the video at this stage and see if you can figure out what those three terms are going to be. I'll just give you a moment to do that. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's see how you got on. Well, to get the second term in the sequence, u2, what I've got to do is set n equal to 1. So what I'll do is I'll just put when n equals 1. When you're doing this, generally, you most probably won't need to write as much as I'm going to write in here. You should be able to do it virtually straight off, I would have thought. But I'll take you slowly through the steps. So when n equals 1, we're going to have u1 plus 1, in other words, the second term, u2, in the sequence. And it's going to be equal to 3 times u1 squared minus 9. And... I know what u1 is, we're told that the first term was 2, so it's going to be 3 times 2 squared, and then minus 9. And that's going to give me 3 times 4, which is 12, take away 9, so that's going to be 3. So my second term in the sequence then is 
3. And to get the third term in the sequence, I now have to just set n equal to 2. So when n equals 2, we end up with u2 add 1, the third term, u3, is equal to 3 times un. n is now 2, so it's 3 times u2 squared, and then minus 9. We know what u2 is, the second term. We've just worked it out. It was 3, so it's 3 times 3 squared minus 9. And what we have here is 18. So let's just define what that sequence was, OK? So therefore, the sequence is, and we've got the first term, which was 2, second term was 3, and the third term was 18. So, first three terms then in that sequence. Now, sometimes you get questions which involve several terms in the sequence. And here I've got an example which should illustrate this. What we've got is find the first four terms in the sequence then, where the n plus 2 term u n plus 2 is equal to twice the n plus 1 term 2 u n plus 1 minus the nth term u n. And we've got the first two terms in this sequence u1 being 3 u2 being minus 1 and it's defined for n greater than or equal to 1. Now I've got the first two terms in the sequence u1 and u2 I need the third term. And to get the third term, I need to set n equal to 1. So we'll just say when n equals 1, then what we've got is u1 add 2. So that's going to be u3, the third term in the sequence. And it's equal to 2 times, and then remember, n is 1. So you get 1 add 1 here. So it's twice the second term, u2 minus, and then n is 1, so minus the first term, u1. And I can fill this in now with the values that I've got. Twice the second term, u2 was minus 1, and then minus the first term, u1, which was 3. And working this out, we've got minus 2, minus 3, so that's minus 5. Let's work out now the next term in the sequence, the fourth term, in other words. So when n equals 2, we've got u4 equals 2 times u3, the third term, minus u2, the second term. And again, filling these now in with the values, it's going to be twice u3. u3 was minus 5. And then we've got minus u2, which was minus 1. So you've got minus, minus 1 there. So we end up then with minus 10 plus 1. So that's going to be minus 9. So write down the first four terms then for our sequence. So therefore, those terms in that sequence, let's just put an intro here. So the sequence is 3 the first term, second term minus 1, third term minus 5, and the fourth term minus 9. And we could carry on then working out further terms. OK, well, I've got one here for you to try. Here it is. Find the first four terms in this sequence. u n plus 2 equals u n plus 1 squared minus 2 u n, where u1 is 2, u2 is 5, and it's defined for n is greater than or equal to 1. So just give you a moment to try that one. Just pause the video. When you come back, we'll run through it. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So let's just give you the answer first so you can check it. The sequence then is, well, we've got the first two terms. First term was 2, second term was 5. But the third term then was 21 and the fourth term was 431. So hopefully you got that. If not, I'll just take you through how we do it. So 
We want to get the third term now, so we set n equal to 1. So when n equals 1, we end up with the third term, u3 equals u2 all squared. So that's u2 all squared minus 2 times u1. And if we fill the values in, u2 was 5, so you've got 5 squared minus twice the first term, which was 2. So you've got 25 minus 4, which is 21. And for the next term, we'll just section this off here. For the next term, we just set n equal to 2. So when n equals 2, we get u4. So u4 is equal to the previous term, which is u3, all squared, and then minus 2 times u2. And u3 was 21, so we got 21 squared minus 2 times u2. u2 was 5, so we've got 21 squared, which is 441. Take away 10, which is 431. OK, so hopefully you've been able to see how we can then work with recurrence relationships. And uh, hopefully this will equip you now to do many examples on this kind of question.